What is up, YouTubes? Mountain Man Magic, and we have another core set from the future to talk about. This one is from 2020. Did you know that 2020 is more than 2019, which means obviously this set is better because math. I'm gonna run through the archetypes, the cards to keep an eye out for, and more importantly, the wedges to keep in mind. That's right, this set isn't just two color combos, we're going for three. Now a wedge is an allied color pairing, plus its enemy color, which kind of makes like a triangle shape or a wedge. The ones in this set are Timur, green, blue, and red, Jeskai, blue, red, and white, Mardu, red, white, and black, Abzan, white, black, and green, and Saltai, black, blue, and green. All of these have a very fancy mythic card to go along with them. No, you don't need to play three colors. Obviously, the two color pairings all work. They're all great. But if you can get that max synergy value from all three of them, go for it. Alrighty, time to take a look at the cards that we want to draft. I'm gonna go through it wedge by wedge and break it down by the two color pairings that make up that wedge. Let's get into it. Let's start with Timor as it seems to be everyone's favorite standard deck at the moment and in draft can be insane. That's because Timor is all in on that elemental creature game plan and will often revolve around the uncommon creature Risen Reef because there are so many elementals across all three of Timor's colors. And this card alone can generate insane card advantage. I repeat, insane card advantage. You need to remove this ASAP if your opponent plays it. First, looking at green, we find the biggest bodies, which is to be expected, but the more elementals we draft, the more valuable cards like this Trampley Boy become because it gives all of our elementals trample. And then other just good green cards are Overcome and most of the green rares like our Hydra friends who will eat anything our opponent attempts to play. Blue has a couple awesome elemental creatures in Frost Lynx to slow down our opponent and of course flyers to add in some evasion to our game plan. And yes, there is the ever lovable counter spells like Bone to Ash at Common. I always like to have one of these in my deck, especially with how many big balmy creatures there are in that six plus mana drop spot for this set. And then finally red gives us that aggro game plan in the form of efficient creatures, damage spells. Oh, and Chandra is here to really help out with the elemental front. Each two color pairing that make up Timor have fairly straightforward game plans as well, as shown by the uncommon gold cards. Risen Reef wants you to still win through card advantage and having the biggest bodies around. Creeping Trailblazer and Red Green want you to win through a wide board of elementals as well, but in more of a straightforward brute force type of way. And Lightning Stormkin wants you to win fast with evasive elementals through the air and with quick damages to the face. Next we see Jeskai, red, white, and blue, or America's favorite color combo. Red and blue we know has Stormkin, who is happy to break away from the elemental creature focus and instead focus on an all-flying brigade. Seriously, lots and lots of flying. Jeskai is the Sky Tribe in this set. It's pretty obvious once you see that all three of the gold cards that make up Jeskai have flying. Blue and white brings Empyrean Eagle, which pumps all of our flyers. Quick sidebar here, the Fairy Miscreant deck is real. If you can get four, five, six of these things, you will most likely be able to run away with the game. Then there's red, white, which gives us Sky Knight Vanguard, who wants to attack early and often and get you that constant attacking threat building out your board. Blue always has a good amount of flyers, but white does as well. It gives us awesome angels, we have early plays to be more aggressive, we have good removal options, and the ability to gain all kinds of life so we can win a slugfest if the game goes into the later rounds. Or just casually toss in some huge late game bombs like our totally not to be feared Dragon Buddy Dracuseth. This wedge seems to be really hard to stop if they get going because of the mind-boggling amount of evasion they have, but then each color also gives them removal options to be able to get ahead early and often. Let freedom ring, my friends. Moving on to my friend Tyler's favorite wedge, we have Mardu, which is white, black, and red, and they have that all-in aggro game plan. Aggro strats like this are pretty straightforward. Do damage quickly and don't let off the gas pedal but the decisions of when to play that combat trick or how to use that great removal option are critical to make sure you can close out games or buy us time for our crazy bombs like a rare angel, dragon, or demon to finish the job. Each of the two color pairings are aggro with a wide board focus. Sky Knight Vanguard will constantly pump out creatures and then we can be rewarded by doing so with the sometimes misprinted Corpse Knight, which is only a 2-2, but pings our opponent every time a creature ETBs for us, token or not. And that's great because we want to be playing creatures early and often, and this guy gives us an annoying amount of bonus value. Then once we have our wide board, if we haven't closed out the game and our opponent thinks they've stabilized against our army of ankle biters, we slam down Ogre Siegebreaker to make blocking a nightmare for our opponent. Keep in mind if you have first strike, you can deal your damage, then kill them off with the Ogre before their blocker can swing back. And of course, Chandra is still around to express her outrage. Keep applying pressure, hold removal for those annoying blockers, and make sure to have some bombs to ensure you don't get outscaled 
revealed into the mid to late game. Next is Abzan, which is white, black, and green. The story here is we want to go wide, destroy everything, and if we must, trample over our opponent. The white, black game plan mirrors that from Mardu, with Corpse Knight wanting us to go wide and get on the board early and often. But then green comes in with Moldervine Reclamation and now doesn't mind us trading off our creatures because each one that dies means we draw a card and gain a life. One nice thing about green in this set is that it provides us multiple ways to draw or replace cards in our hand so we're less likely to run out of gas. In limited, this is especially important. Rabid Bite, as usual, is our premium removal spell for anyone playing green. And then the white-green pairing brings us Iron Root Warlord, which starts as a nice wall and builds into a massive offensive threat once we fill out our board with any and every creature we can. The definition of this pairing is to go wide. White can do a little bit of everything in this set. Black provides the removal and bombs you need, and green the finishing power. And to round out our wedges we have Saltai with blue, black, and green and their focus is enter the battlefield effects. Risen Reef is back as a prime example and then blue, black shows up with Tomebound Lich which allows us to loot a card when it enters the battlefield or deals any combat damage and is incredibly annoying for your opponent to deal with. A combo I love if I can pull it off is discarding a huge monster creature in my hand and then cheating it out with blood for bones. For example, play a creature on turn one or two, then play Lich on turn three, discarding Villas Broker of Blood, and then turn four, sack whatever you want, get out our 8-8 game-winning demon onto the board. And the couple times I've pulled this off, it has been responded to with my opponent pausing for a second and then conceding. Now some artifacts to keep in mind, Anvil Rot Raptor helps in a lot of decks. First Strike is great and being colorless is an easy card to slot into most decks. Bag of Holding is incredibly good and a card advantage machine. Colossus Hammer is legit, especially if you're in that go wide deck. Meteor Golem is always good as a top end curve filler and I've liked Steel Overseer even by itself because it can keep pumping itself every turn. It's a great blocker early on and only gets better the more artifact creatures you play with it. But now that we have the cards figured out, we got to do some rankings. And to jump right into it, I don't have anything that I would honestly put in a tier 3 right off the bat. With every draft and sealed event I've done, I think each color, each color pairing is close to being competitive with its peers. There's none that feel overly underpowered or really overpowered. But looking at it from an individual color perspective, I have green, blue, and black in the top tier with red and white just a step beneath them on the limited power scale. But we're often drafting two, if not three colors. So where do we rank the color pairings? Great question. In tier two are black, red, white, red, white, green, and white, black. The three color wedges, I have Mardu and Abzan in that tier two. Then stepping up to the tier one, the two color pairings, I have blue, green, green, black, white, blue, blue, black, blue, red, and red, green. And then the three color wedges would leave us with Timur, Jeskai, and Saltai all being in that tier one. With this being a core set though, again, cabs is very important. Make sure you're drafting creatures, combat tricks, and removal. You need to be on the board early, affecting the board, and ready for those bombs your opponent is most certainly gonna be playing because there's a lot of sweet power and spicy goodness in this set. I know some people get really bent out of shape when they don't open that awesome rare or mythic rare. Just remember, there's nothing wrong with taking a good common removal spell as your pack one pick one. A card like Murder is an awesome pack one pick one. In this set, you also run into a lot of stale board states, so do have answers. Removal's great for getting through stalled boards, but also big evasive creatures or some type of clever combat trick shenanigans to get through that stalemate. Some of those gold cards that you need to answer as soon as they come down are Risen Reef, Corpse Knight, and Sky Knight Vanguard, because these cards are going to generate so much value that if you don't take care of them, your opponent may just run away with the game much quicker than you're expecting. You need to prioritize mana fixing earlier as well, especially in this set, because tap lands and the mana fixing there, you're not going to find them as commons in packs, so they're competing with the basic lands, meaning they're not going to show up as much. So if you're in the two color, especially in a three color deck, you got to prioritize your mana fixing sooner than later. And do not be greedy splashing in those double and triple color cards with little to no fixing in your deck. That's a fantastic way to be stuck with a great card in your hand and nothing to do with it. I do want to touch on too, some cards that I think are borderline unplayable. Flood of Tears is my number one card that I will probably never play in this format. To be fair, the best case scenario for it is when you're playing against that go wide token deck and you're going to bounce all those and that, you know, in a way that's an awesome removal for them. But in no way am I prioritizing this card over other main deckable cards. It just presses pause on the game. And if you're ahead, you don't want to play it because you're ahead on board. So why would you play it? If you're behind, you just take a turn off. You let your opponent build their board out. You then build your board out. They then get to put all their answers on it, like the enchantment removal and such that they already had. At the end of the day, though, you don't want to play a card that is just hoping to get you a game-saving draw, because you just want that card to be the game-saving draw, right? Like, that would 
make more sense. So again, Flood of Tears, not a fan. Number two I have is Undead Servant. I, It's a four drop that's, you You actually like want it to die so that the next four drop you play it, it gives you another 2-2 two, two token. I mean, the Vulture can help with that self mill plan, but it just seems like too little value for too high of an investment. Do the opposite of Nike and just don't do it. And then number three, I have the Ley Lines because I think a lot of people get excited to play these and they think, oh, if I have this in play, I mean, a lot of the times you play them and you get zero value. The one that's probably the most playable is the green one. I could see a case for that one for sure, but these cards, just often don't provide you enough value in a limited setting to be worth playing, especially just that one copy in your deck. They're great for constructed, limited, not so much. And I'll honorable mention Ferocious Pup, not because it's unplayable by any means, but unless you have a reason to need the two bodies and the one card, then you don't wanna play it. You'd rather just play something like Centaur Courser to have three power and three toughness rather than two power and three toughness in the card. Core sets are usually a return to basics. I think they're great to kind of reset you, especially with War of the Spark just having come out like 12 minutes ago. We had a lot of awesome Planeswalkers, but it was a very unique draft environment. This set gets us back to what, you know, back to our roots as it were, although it's far spicier than Core Set 2019. It has much more interesting gameplay. I think the archetypes are far more competitive with each other. It's just exceeded my expectations for a Core Set, which in no way is a bad thing. So there you have it. I hope you liked the video and I hope this helps you be ready to jump into some drafts. Best of luck if you're playing at your LGS or online, whether it be Arena or MTGO. Thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next one. If you want to help me out, hit that subscribe button. If you're feeling generous, join up as a patron. It'd be awesome to have you join the club. You're going to make my day for sure. All right, I'm out of here. Take it easy. Thanks for watching. Peace.